on how to customize NetSuite for container management. So my name is Julian Bissonneth. I'm a business solutions specialist here at Guru Solution, and our presenter today is going to be Richard Law, our ERP specialist and expert in container management solution. Richard, I think you can start with the agenda for today. Uh, hi, everybody. Can you hear me well? Absolutely. Okay. Cool. So today's agenda, uh, we're going to talk about quickly about Guru Solutions, so a company overview about who we are and what we do. Then I'll start talking about uh, an intro about container management, the challenges that we find uh, or, uh, during about container management or why we need it. A uh, high-level process about what's the main or core process that needs to be taken account for, how to start to configure NetSuite for it, a live demo session, and then a question and answer period about uh, container management. All right, so a little bit of what we do. So what we do here at Gurus is really scale up your business with cloud solutions. So we try to partner with great solution like NetSuite and Salesforce to really scale up your business guys. We're trying to be really a true partner. Um, so we have uh, been, you know, 10 years on the cloud market. Um, we have a lot of experience and expertise in, in, in how to use NetSuite and customize NetSuite. And also we have our a silver partner on Salesforce. So our goal is really to help you guys um, overcome challenges and you really be more efficient in using and leveraging cloud technologies. Thanks, Julien, about the, the quick introduction about ourselves. Uh, during, uh, during this presentation, this webinar, uh, Julian will be moderating the questions and take notes and list them out. And during the course of this webinar, I'll stop sometimes to answer, answer with Julien some questions about container management. So you feel free to type in your questions through the GoToWebinar window that you have open with you. So let's start off with uh, container management. So an intro about uh, container management. Um, so container management, in our case, is very much a customization and not a generic solution. Uh, what do I mean by this? So Indeed, for container management, there is the same core challenges that we need to address, but it's not generic because each use case is specific to your business. So don't see it as a plug-and-play type of uh, application or process. Uh, still, we're going to need to, to customize the process to fit your business needs. And in, in this webinar, I'm going to explain one specific use case, especially during the demo, but uh, don't worry. Maybe this process will not resemble of what you're expecting as container management, but it's possible to switch it up to make it uh, to make it more fitting to your business needs. So some challenges that we find uh, while trying to think about container management, or why do we have container management? But to start off, uh, uh, I'll let Julien uh, introduce this poll. So we always have a few questions during our webinar. So in this case, so where do you log your container information? So basically what we want to know is a little bit of, you know, how you guys are tracking your information for incoming containers. So I'll give you some time to answer a little bit about a poll, and we'll see how the general information is for everybody. Right, give you a few more seconds. Here we go. So general consensus is really a little bit about you know email and Excel. A lot of you guys are talking with your vendors and specifically understanding you know via emails. So that's common sense. Um, what's great with the solution that we're going to present you is that you're going to be able to track everything and have a very good overview using safe searches on how you can track your container coming in. Um, all right, 
All right, Richard, you can go on. So as the majority has uh, a specified Excel or email or other methods, so uh, here's a nice list of some challenges that we encounter uh, about container management. For example, tracking inventory or container movement, it's saved on Excel. The freight information also on Excel. Uh, however, when you're on Excel, it's difficult to provide an accurate lead time and your product availability. So because it's not integrated, for example, with your inventory management, it's on Excel. You and when someone tries to sell your goods, you don't know if it's if it's on freight, is it in your warehouse? Again, same thing in, in terms of visibility, uh, transparency for your asset value. So uh, especially for auditing, when you do your accounting auditing, it's hard to determine how much in money terms you have uh, inventory on, in transit, uh, still, on, uh, still at your vendor's location or your own location. Um, and again, it, it, what happens, you, you're lacking real-time product information or visibility. Uh, maybe it's an exhaustive process to manage your inventory movement. Same thing to maybe also capture your landed cost information. So uh, maybe, yes, you, you follow everything through and then, oh, I have landed costs, but how do I distribute my landed costs across all my containers? Um, so based on those challenges, maybe we need to think about is how to streamline this process or a myth, uh, what is the thinking we need to have to, pro to streamline our process. Uh, maybe we want to streamline is the capability to track the product as it, if it's loaded on a container. Maybe to continue tracking, so have a tracking process of where the container is situated, is it on the water or at your warehouse. Maybe automate your pro maybe more it's automate your process for inventory movement have more visibility on accurate lead time. You can host that in, in NetSuite, for example, to know the lead time of a container based on your vendor's performance. Uh, this is gonna help also to, maybe you want to quicken finding information about your container, and you're gonna have less time investing time tracking and processing a container. So this information is resided somewhere. Instead of going back and forth, for example, between Excel or emails, it's all hosted in NetSuite. So you can, and as Julien has said, you can create safe searches reports to better understand the information about the container. Uh, uh, maybe I'll stop here. Uh, Julien, any questions right about now? Uh, no. no, not for right now. Right. Cool. So second poll. So what would be the reason for you to acquire a new container management process, basically? So that's kind of the idea we want to know. So let me start the poll. Can you get, hello, can anybody hear me? Oh, Richard, yes. Yeah, okay. So kind of answer the question is basically what we saw in the poll is that, you know, there's a lot of uh, different uh, response to it. Uh, you know, too much overhead, current process is too slow, need uh, for an improved analytics and reporting. So it's kind of a mix, so interesting in the audience. All right, so I'll continue on. So, um, so now I'm going to talk about a high-level process of what we should be thinking about container management when we're doing our design or customization. So what's our, what are the considerations required to do this custom design? So first, think about what is required to respect container management process uh, in, a core, in a, the core process of container management. So usually what we what we hear about or think about is once an item, items are in transit or on the freight, 
the ions are considered, and I go and quote mine, so we need to show in our books, accounting-wise and inventory-wise, that's once the, the container is filled and being shipped on the sea, for example, based on our contract with the vendor, now, because it's in transit, it becomes under my ownership. So I need to show through my books and my inventory manage, uh, uh, management um, that these items are mine. Uh, so maybe an item receipt could, re by just faking an item receipt for a location on the water, could be an example thing. It's not at my physical location, but it's in a location called on the water. That's with an item receipt. Uh, then the next step could be items are received at my warehouse or main location. So maybe uh, we need to show that, yes, it's on the water, but I need to transfer it to say now it's physically at warehouse A, B, or C. So maybe, for example, a transfer order with an item receipt that does, uh, that does this uh, process. And finally, if required, you need to apply the landed costs. And usually landed costs, for, for those who are familiar with landed costs, usually we apply on the item receipt. So we need to create a logic to say the landed cost falls on the item receipt because it, it increases the value of your item, correct? So the goal of a landed cost is to say, well, the true cost is my physical cost of my item plus the cost of transportation and maybe additional uh, transport fees as, for example, duty fees. Uh, so I'm going to be more specific based on this high-level process diagram, how to think about the design and how you customize your process. So imagine um, right here, this is all this, the customization that you require to do some container management. So some tools and services that you create within NetSuite to manage all your containers. And this uses your, and this usually will use your purchase orders to say which items and which purchase order are are being not hosted, but uh, are being logged into a container. And this, what happens usually, a vendor says, "Hey, by the way, your PO ABC and PO one two three is on container uh, X Y Z." Or sometimes a partial purchase order, half of it is on one container, and that half, the other half, another container. So you need to find a way to say, "Hey, how do I know which container contains which purchase order?" Okay. Then, by using standard NetSuite, we, so as I said previously, we need to know where, once it's shipped, we need to say the physical location of my item. So a first step is to say, I need still to do an item receipt, because the goal of the item receipt is to say, it's now under my ownership, and it costs this much in my books. And, it's, and if I do my reporting based on segmentation, as we say, a location called on the water or in transit, uh, we can define saying it's not physically where I'm at, but it's coming towards me. Then, as I said before in the slide before, uh, we need to say now it's physically shipped to my warehouse or my current location, so I need to transfer it to say now from it was on the water, now it's at warehouse A, B, or C. And usually we do that by using a transfer order to to uh, to acknowledge that, uh, that movement. And with the container management, you can still do this all by hand or manually, or you can have an automated way through your tools and service uh, feature of your container management to automate the creation of the item receipt and also the transfer order, and also, if required, to apply the line of cost based on multiple rules. Uh, those rules can be based on volume of, of your shipment, the weight, the quantity, or the monetized valuation of your items, and it will distribute accordingly based on your mathematical rules. Uh, so, hopefully, this is going to be this is this is. I hope for the rest of the demo I'm going to show, I you you will retain what I'm talking about. So, I'm going to show you during the demo the container management tool and how the item receipt, transfer order, and landed costs are created through the customization for the use case I'm going to show very soon. So before going towards the live demo, uh, what some considerations about NetSuite configuration? So um, for some people, for some clients, for example, uh, a first level where the container data can be hosted is just directly on the PO. Uh, it's not, high, it's not the, let's say, the, the most complex customization, but what 
maybe it's sufficient is to have your purchase order and just have a custom field under a custom tab or a custom field under the body to say which container record it is in and maybe that's sufficient. Uh, you do a safe search saying give me all uh, give me all containers and give me the numbers of the POs under it and could be sufficient for, uh, for, for many clients and maybe add, uh, add the status of the PO. But knowing that it's, it's not as simple as that, uh, what's required is perhaps and a better way to manage complex process is to have a custom record that holds all information about the PO, the container information, uh, so uh, here, so this is a custom record. It's showing the container number, for example, the status of the container, estimated arrival date, and so forth. Maybe you want to manage your landed costs directly on that custom record. Uh, perhaps you want to see the items on that container line by line. See what are the related items, uh, uh, related items to the container. Maybe you want to see the reference to the vendor bill or even you want to attach files, so let's say with box or with, your, with the file cabinet about anything about this container. Uh, so this is, a, this is better for if you have more complex process, easier way to manage a container because everything is hosted on one uh, custom record called it in our case container record. So, and, so with that in mind, it's going to help us of how to report on containers. So if you want to scale up the tracking of the container, maybe you need to envision a method or methods to how to track them. So maybe you want to know which container is late. Uh, what is the volume, the dollar amount, or quantity of the items that are in transit versus arrived? Uh, maybe you want to know which PO is missing on the container. So by asking yourself what I want to know or report on, it will give you a better way to design what do you want as a feature on your container record, custom record. Uh, some want some, uh, to add an uh, address on the container record or the name of the main, the main shipment company for the containers, for example. So, maybe, so by knowing this and knowing what you want to report and analyze, you can add that information on the container record itself and create your report or safe searches. So to continue the demonstration about uh, container management in NetSuite, uh, as you can see here, I have pre-created a purchase order. So I call it WebRNR3. It has an iPad, has four iPad minis to be sold through the and shipped through the container. So we're buying a PO, uh, we're buying from a vendor called Amazon for four iPad minis. So what have we done to help out uh, other customers? We inserted as a menu in under lists in this case, and let's create a new one. So let's call this container Richard's Richard's container. Uh, what's so as we can see here, this is a custom record, and what's great about this custom record is that you can choose whatever you want to put or put information on the container record for later for purposes for reporting or for analytics. Correct. So uh, container type instead of a ten feet, twenty feet, forty feet, you can have maybe. Boat, train, truck, vessel can be, you can say if it's a boat or the name of the vessel itself, shipping forwarder, uh, even your ETAs, your dates, you can choose or can use this data for your reporting purposes. So uh, I'm expecting to arrive on July 28th. I actually received it on, I don't know, some actual date. Uh, there's a lag time or lead time. Why, why, why is it always happening for this type of vendor? why they're always late with my containers, something like that. Or they're always earlier, or early I mean, what's the main purpose, why? Also for in this use case, we can see here that we added some sections for duty fees, freight fees, and other types of fees. And these are used for landed costs. So for example, so we just created this container, Richard's container. I'm expecting it to receive at the main location right here. So when I save, we will see that contextually it knows that this container is empty and it requires and this container is being is required to be filled up with the items that you uh, that you want so here's a nice button called add items to container 
And what this shows is a list of all PO and PO lines that have not been containerized, so are not on a container or have are still uh, and are waiting to be containerized. So uh, as remember here, we have webinar three as the PO from Amazon. So I choose this line, and what's fun in this case use case, uh, we can do partial containerizing of of POs for containers, or select multiple. It's a multi-select. We can select multiple POs. So there, it's possible. It's possible that for the same container, there's multiple POs hosted uh, into that container. And for our case, let's say that we take this PO line. It's complete PO line. So as we can see here now, the container status is in filling mode. And as we can see here under items in the container sub tab, we create a list to say here are the items and the POs that are, that are, are, that are in this container. Okay. So let's say I'm done. I'm done filling, or, uh, filling my container up. I can change the status saying, okay, it's filled. There's another contextual button called receive items on, on the water, so OTW. So, so what that this does is once clicked, and as we've seen in the previous slides, we're expecting to have an item receipt that should put my container on the water. So the location of the item receipt will be on the water so that when we look at our accounting reporting uh, reports or inventory reports, we see uh, the quantity of items on the water and also the money value or the dollar amounts of items on the water. Uh, so let, let's say that uh, it's okay, the container the container's being filled up, then you're waiting for your vendor, your container vendor to say, okay, we're ready, it's, it, uh, it's on the water. What you can do, because this, this is a custom record, this custom record can be searched. So if I search for Richard's container, it appears in the global search if required but we're already on it. So the vendor says, yep, yeah, it's on the water, it's ready to go. So you, we click on receive items on the water. So we have a success message saying items receipts are created and items are on the water. So what happens if I'm gonna scroll down my container, we see here under the related transactions that there is indeed an item receipt. That's the location of the item receipt is on the water. So just to be sure, there's a link here that we can go see the item itself, the item receipt, and it proves, and it proves exactly that from the PO we call webinar number three, there is actually an item receipt for the location on the water. And we can check with our GL impacts as expected. Now we're waiting, it's uh, the containers, uh, it's on the water, uh, the winds and the oceans are doing their job. And finally, boom, uh, someone confirms some operations team. Hey, you have received a container, Richard's container. So you see here contextually, when the container status is in transit, you can say, oh, it has been received at final destination. So we're expecting to have a transfer order, an item fulfillment, and an item receipt now for the main location called main location. So it's a sex message saying items are received to final destination. The page is refreshed and as you can see, indeed we see that a transfer order has been created. The transfer order has been fulfilled and, uh, ha and has been received uh, at the, main, the final main location. So just for a tidbit more information, if I go to that final item receipt, So on this final item receipt, we see that it has been transferred from the on the water, the source location on the water, to its final location called main location. It's as we can, and as we know for landed costs, we can input landed costs directly on the item receipt to give the true cost or of the item. So we rent, let's say the cost of the iPad per iPad is one dollar, and the landed cost is one dollar per item. 
Uh, right now, because there's no landed cost, the, the cost of it is $1, but maybe by adding the landed cost to it, the true cost of that being shipped is $2. So how do we add landed cost bit with our container management um, page or tools and services? So if I click and edit this container, and again, this is just a, the use case uh, for this demo, you can have other ways to log your uh, landed cost. In our case, we add here the, let's say the freight amount of $100. So it costs $100 to, to receive, to, to ship the four iPads. I say that the landing cost is ready to be, is, is, is ready. I can save. Because I said landed cost is ready, this button appears. But if I click this button, an error message will say, hey, by the way, you need to link it to a vendor bill. Because in, our, in the process that we created for this demo, was required to have a vendor bill attached to the container to prove that indeed there was a ocean freight amount being logged on this container. So we create a custom, uh, another small custom record to do a link between the container itself and an existing, uh, an open vendor bill. So just for the purpose of this demo, let's say it's bill number 14, I save. So there's one, at least one vendor bill attached to this container and I do calculate landed cost. Again, another success message saying landed cost is calculated. refreshes and in the meantime while it's refreshing I'm going to show what happens to the item receipt so I go back to the same the, my latest item receipt so we see here there's no money sign or coin sign a uh, coin icon here so if I refresh my page you see here oh the landed cost uh, there's a landed cost value for the reception of this these iPad minis. So I click on it and if we remember we put $100 and here we go the $100 has been logged under the landed cost cost category. Hence the, va the value or the total value of the iPad minis have been raised by $100 of the landed cost. If we go back to the container record, so Richard's container, we see here that the, the container status has been changed to landed cost. So it has been applied. Um, and that's it in, in this use case. So just to recap, there's a container, uh, custom record called container record or container list or whatever what you need to, to, talk, uh, to say about this container. And you can log the required information for your reporting or for analyzing what's happening to this container. So you're not restricted to see what you're seeing in this demo. You could add or remove information, have sub tabs for better organization or to show the related records maybe have uh, vendor bills attached to it, or a PDF so you can use your file cabinet and attach it to your file cabinet page. Uh, if, you, if you require to do mass updates of your container, you can do a safe search and do inline editing. This is a simple list, but you can add more columns to better manage your containers or create new safe searches to have it as a dashboard to see, show me which container is late or which container is, is the status waiting to be to have landed costs applied and so forth. So I'm, I'm done with my demonstration about NetSuite. Uh, I'll continue on about uh, other possibilities that you can do with container management. Uh, so you can try to have maybe it's automation to add a complete PO into a container instead of having a PO line. Say I want this complete PO on this container. Okay, maybe you want to go have a, chain, a screen that changes the location of a container once it's clicked. It's, instead of going into each container, you can maybe have, as Julien said, a safe search when inline the editing, changing the locations of your containers. Uh, a bit further, have an integration with your vendors, so maybe an EDI, that instead of them always telling you, oh, it's on the water, oh, it's over here, it's over there, you can, there, you can have a way to integrate with their system so that they don't need to tell you, they just click a button to change the status of your container. How about a bit more? Let's try to push it. How about have a bar scanning process with your warehouse. Once you receive, receive your container, 
at your and you scan the container, it automates the reception at the final destination by using a barcode scanning process. And let's go crazier again more. GPS tracking, maybe ha if your containers have GPS tracking enabled, you can maybe find an API that integrates with NetSuite to tell you the, fit, the actual GPS location of the container. So just to summarize, what I just showed is not a generic process. Uh, container management is implemented based on your requirements. So I show, so here are some possibilities, and if you have other ideas that you wish to implement for container management, uh, there, just by being clear what's required, there's maybe a good way to, to figure out and find a way to go through it. Um, so to finish off, uh, we have, do we have some questions, uh, Julien, on the, on the webinar? Um, yes, we have a few questions. Uh, all right, so one of the questions asked by Ian is, is it possible to create a uh, mass amount of containers? Um, so what's great with, with this is that we're leveraging, you know, NetSuite custom records so we can import by CSV. So if you're creating multiple containers at once um, for a reason, so basically if you're, you're you know, ordering um, a high amount of items and basically wants to create multiple container at once and attaching these items to these multiple containers, it's possible to do it by CSV. Um, let me check. All right, another question here is, I'm receiving multiple POs at once. Um, is it possible to, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sending multiple containers at once. Is it possible to receive them in batch? Um, so what happened is that we created uh, some functionality for, for some customers to um, use another record called a shipment. So what's great with a shipment is that you can attach multiple containers um, into one shipment. So what it do is that it process them all automatically. So any so once you know the shipment is on the water, you can click on the submit the shipment the the, the button for processing uh, containers on the water. So what it will do is that it will create uh, an item receipt for each container and each PO associate for all these containers at once. So you don't have to go into each containers and 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 process the button. Um, so that's another feature that we added uh, a few times for depending on how you guys are processing your PO and how many you know containers you're shipping at once. Um, all right, I think that's it for the questions. Um, we can wait a few seconds, but um, this is it. Um, so no more q and so uh, thank you everybody for attending our our webinar on container. Uh, if you have any question, you can email us or go on a web page. Uh, there is a data sheet on container management. So if you want more information, if you know, if you want more information on how the solution is working or have another demo, uh, it will be our pleasure to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you everybody. Enjoy your day.